lesson 101, we are going to do more determinants and more Kramer's rule. But instead of two by twos, we are going to talk about three by three systems. Three equations, three unknowns, three by three matrices to be able to solve those. So I want to begin with how in the world do we evaluate a three by three matrix? We know that if we have a two by two, we first do this diagonal, upper left to lower right, and then we subtract the other diagonal. But if I try to do that on a three by three, I'm going to have four numbers that I never even use. I've got four numbers in that matrix that aren't even on a diagonal. So we're going to adapt our method just a little bit. First thing that you need to do is to copy it down with the bars. And then we're going to recopy the first two columns. So the negative 4, negative 1, negative 3, and the 5, 2, and the 1. We are still going to take diagonals that go, oh, that should have been a negative three. Or that should have been a positive three there. Thank you for that correction before we went any farther. So five, two, three. Do I have that right now? Okay, thank you for that correct. So now what we are going to do is we are going to look at our diagonals that go upper left to lower right. And I now have three of them. So I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to multiply all along each of those diagonals. And you would probably normally not write down negative four times two times one, but you would just say that is what, negative eight. Let me check my work here as I go. Don't let me make any other mistakes in there. And then for the next one, 5 times negative 5 times negative 3, so two negatives are a positive. 25 times 3 is a positive 75. And 4 times negative 1 times positive 3, so that is negative 12. So those are all the ones that go from top left to bottom right. And when we did them on a two by two, top left to bottom right was always the positive one. So if they're still going that same direction, they are still going to all be positive. So I'm going to put pluses between each of those. So I have negative eight plus 75 minus 12. Now I'm going to do three diagonals that go the other way. So I'm going to have these three diagonals. So the ones that go bottom left to top right, bottom left to top right was negative. So I'm going to need these to all be negative signs. So I'm going to do the negative of what I get, and the negative of what I get, and the negative of what I get. So for those three diagonals, I'm going to have negative 3 times 2 times 4. So minus minus is plus. 24. And the next one I'm going to have minus 3 times minus 5 times minus 4. So minus, minus, minus. I think I've got a negative in there. And 20 times 3 is 60. And then for the last one, I've got 1 
times negative one times positive five. So negative negative is a plus, and that is a five. This line is required. This part is optional in the work that I want to see. But I want to see because you're going to make some mistakes on these. And for me to help you figure out where the mistake was, I need to know how to get the answer that you came up with. So then if we combine those, let's see, what do we have? 99 plus 5, so I think I have 104 from my positive ones, and minus 80 from my negative ones, 24, did I do that right? So that determinant would be positive 24. And now notice that I did use all nine of my original numbers. I don't have this negative one in the original matrix actually shaded that I used it, but I used it when I repeated it over here. Okay, let's keep going. If we want to use Kramer's rule to solve it. Now remember with Kramer's rule, we needed to end up with, when we just did a two by two, we found the determinant matrix. Then we changed the x coefficients for the constants and we found dx. And we changed the y coefficients for the constants and we found dy. And then we did dx over dv was our x coordinate of our solution and dy over dv was the y coordinate of our solution. Okay, what we are going to do is to get a third one, dz, and dz over dd will be the z coordinate of our final solution. If any of these denominators are zero, and we had this before, if any of the denominators are zero, that means we don't have a single point that's our solution. We either, with a two by two, we either had the same line or we had parallel lines. We either had infinitely many solutions or we had no line, or we had no solutions. And we still are gonna need to do that. And it'll be a little bit different with what's going on here, but we could solve parallel lines or we could have different versions of the same line. So let's attempt to use Kramer's rule now with a three by three. So DD, we won't worry about the constants yet. We will just take three, two, one, Negative 2, negative 3, positive 2, positive 1, negative 1, and negative 3. And did I get that all correct? Okay, now we recopy the two left columns. 3, 2, 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 2. And then we do all of our positive ones. So I'm going to have three times negative three times negative three. Two minus times is a plus, 27. Then I'm going to have negative two, negative one, and one. Two minus times is a plus, two. Then I'm going to take 1 times 2 times 2. Those are all positive, so it's a plus. 2 times 2 is 4. Now I'm going to do the 3 in the negative direction. So I am going to have a minus and a 1 minus 3 and a 1. So I'm going to have two negatives, which are a plus, 3. And this is also the minus direction, so I have a minus. 2 minus 1 and 3, so I have 2 minus sign, so that's a plus. 6. And I have a minus sign, and 
negative three, two, and negative two. So that's three minus signs. So a minus 12, I think. You guys are checking my work as I do that. So then if I put those together, I have 30 plus 8 plus 4. So I have 30 plus 12 minus 12. So I believe I just have positive 30. So when I get ready to do my final answer, all of my denominators are going to be 30. And then maybe I can move it. Okay, now to do dx. I take my x coefficients right where they are. I don't move them. And I replace them with the constants 3, 7, and 23. I keep the other columns the same, negative 2, negative 3, 2, 1, negative 1, and negative 3. Once again, I need to repeat my first two columns. And then I need to do all six of those diagonals, so the positive direction first. Three, negative three, negative three, two negative, so that's still a positive, so 27. Negative two, negative one, 23. Two negatives is a positive, and two times 23 is 46. And one, seven, and two are all positive, so plus 14. Now my one's in the negative direction, so I have an extra minus sign for each of these. Negative, 23, negative 3, and 1. Two negatives are a positive, 69. Extra negative, 2, negative 1, and 3. Two negatives are a positive, 6. And an extra negative, negative 3, 7, and negative 2. Three negatives are a negative. 6 times 7 is 42, and I believe if I add those, I get 120. Okay, now we need the y numerator, which we'll call dy. For the y determinant, we're going to change these y coefficients to the constant. So I'm going to keep the 3, 2, and 1 that were in front of the x's in the original problem. I'm going to change the y's to 3, 7, 23. And I'm going to keep the z's 1, minus 1, minus 3. We copy these first two columns, 3, 2, 1, 3, 7, 23. And do my multiplying. My positive direction, one negative is a negative, nine times seven is 63. Then I have three negative one and one, so that is negative three. And then I have one, two, and 23, so that is plus 46. Then the 3 in the negative direction, so I have an extra minus sign with each of these. Minus 1, 7, and 1 is minus 7. Minus 23, negative 1, and 3 is 2 negatives, so a positive 69. An extra minus with negative 3, 2, and 3. 2 minuses are a plus. 9 times 2 is 18. And I believe those add up to 60. To get my z numerator, I am going to change these z coefficients to the constant. So I am going to keep the 3, 2, 1 that I had in front of the x's. 
and I take the negative 2, negative 3, positive 2 that I had in front of the y's, and I change the z's to 3, 7, and 23. Once again, we copy the first two columns, 3, 2, 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 2, and do my multiplying. So in the positive direction, 3, negative 3, 23 is one minus sign. So that one's going to start with a negative. 9 times 23, 9 times 3 is 27. And 9 times 2 is 18, and 2 is 20, so negative 207. And then minus 2, 7, and 1 is minus 14. And 3, 2, and 2 is plus 12. Then in the negative direction, so I have an extra minus sign with each of these. Minus 1 minus 3 and 3, 2 minuses are a plus 9. An extra minus. These are all positive, so that's going to be a minus. And 6 times 7 is 42. And an extra minus with 23, 2, and minus 2 becomes a plus. And 4 times 23 is 92. And if I add those together, I believe I have negative 150. That means... My final answer DD was 30, so all of my denominators are 30. DX was 120, so my X numerator is 120. DY was 60, so my Y numerator is 60. DZ is negative 150, so my Z numerator is negative 150, but all of these can be reduced. 4, 2, and negative 5, and there we have our answer. So just messier and more computations and more places to mess up with a plus or minus sign. So you have to be careful. Show me the work. Please, please, please do it this way where you are only writing down four determinants. Do not do it the book's way where you are writing down six determinants. You're not going to have enough space to write determinant over determinant. Please do the DD, DX, and so on, and label which is which. It saves you time and it saves you space. Anybody with questions there? Now, fortunately, most of the time the book will say, use Kramer's rule to solve for Y. Use Kramer's rule to solve for Z. They won't usually make you do all three because they get very, very messy and take a lot of time. Um, but it also means you need to read them carefully. So you guys, just for practice, I want everybody to calculate this determinant. This is not a system to solve, so we're not getting X, Y, and Z. But solve, but evaluate this. And at home, type your final number into the chat, but wait to hit enter. So negative 30 is majority world here, but let's go through the steps to make sure we have negative 1, and then we have negative 30, and check my work as I do this, and plus 40, and then these are all the opposites, so minus 4, minus 20, and minus 15, did I get all of those in there right? And so let's see, what is that going to give me? I'm going to have minus 15, minus 4, 
minus 1, that's a minus 20. Another minus 20 cancels with the plus 40. So yes, negative 30. Questions there. Okay, one more of these. Use Kramer's rule. Let's just solve for y. This way you can see it better. So, which determinants are you going to need to find if you're just solving for y? Roddy. Mm -hmm. So, you need to find dv and you need to find dy. So everybody was getting that y is 3, which is correct. I just want to talk through the work just a little bit. dv, we kept all of the original coefficients. We copy the first two columns and multiply all the diagonals, and I believe you got negative 16. Is that right for dv? And then for dy, you go back to your system, you change these y coefficients that I circled in red to the constant. So your middle column is now negative 5, negative 11, negative 9, but you kept the x coefficients and the z coefficients for the other two. Recopy your first two columns, multiply your positive diagonals, top left to bottom right, your negative diagonals, bottom left to top right, and I believe we got negative 48, right? And so to get y, we took dy over dv, which gave us the negative 48 over the negative 16, which was indeed the positive 3. So thumbs up, thumbs down, how do you feel about this? Understand the idea? It's just messy and lots of places for mistakes. <laughs>